Hi Lucy. Hello Trini, how are you? I'm good darling, how are you? I'm very, very well, thank you. So darling, this week we listened. We did, there were so many questions about scarves, so here we are. It was a bit mad, it was nearly as mad as when they discovered you who are having a baby. <laughs> oh my goodness, and please can I just say thank you so much to all the wonderful messages, I was quite overwhelmed. I read them Lucy and I just so thought how much they love you and it was just so delightful reading them too it made me want to have a baby again i felt very very excited for you to see that's all you know that um anyway darling last week what was it last week was sequins and what have you got on i am wearing a sequin skirt from zara i think if you can just see here and i've gone full black and white yeah. white trainers black tights white top and a long black jacket creating those long lines i love that i want to say something to you this is this education around pregnancy yeah. do you have a longer coat i don't have one here i'd say i love the white line underneath great skirt is it stretchy can you wear it during pregnancy yes fantastic yes but i'd say if you have a longer coat yeah. that line will be better because as your bump grows you'll be aware that you're changing your proportion because you're very used to being a willowy dancer. Yeah. When you're pregnant, keeping that thought for you is to keep that very long line, especially now we're coming into winter. So the longer your coats are, the more you'll feel that. Yeah, I definitely feel better this week than I did last week in terms of the streamlining my body. Can I tell you a funny story just so you can understand that everyone goes through this? When Susanna was pregnant, about the same stage as you with her first baby, she went off on a journey, this is the worst thing to do, with her gay florist friend, who was like, knew nothing about pregnancy. But she sort of said, oh, let's do something different, honey. And she went off and she came back in Iskander linen square boxes. Okay, and this is an hourglass woman. And I went, Susanna, what happened to you? Because we get flummoxed those first few months of thinking, who am I now? And I think it's only after a while that you can begin to think, let me really be fitted in some places. This is where scarves are so good, Lucy, because when I was pregnant, I never bought a coat that was bigger. Because first of all, you've got a radiator around you. But also, um, I would take those coats that would feel too small to, to fasten and use the scarf in the front but then get the nice narrow line on the side. Yes, okay, yes. Because you still have that shape. Still have that shape. So don't buy a new coat, buy lots of big, long scarves. That's what it's about if you're gonna get some with pregnancy. What should you buy? Buy scarves. <laughs> buy scarves, okay, I'm, I'm down with that. And I need to buy a scarf, so great. <laughs> I thought, Lucy, I'm gonna do six things with scarves, main things. I'm gonna do how to tie them, how I wear them, sizes. But I want to start with culling when you don't know what to give somebody you give them a scarf it's something that we can be given as much as we're bought we can build up collections that are sentimental because the person who gave it to us but maybe they gave us the worst color we should wear near our face yeah all right so i'm going to give you some examples i was given a scarf which was a really bad brown i'm going to say dara brown for want of a better word. I then got out some plum dye and it turned into that color. Scarf collections should always be in your best colors because they're like your makeup substitute as well. So you never want them in bad colors because they're always really close to your face. But if they have an amazing shape and they're not a pattern that will be ruined by dye, consider dyeing some of your scarves. Amazing. Do you just buy just Dylon wool dye? Yeah, Dylon wool dye for a cold dip dye. I usually, when I do wools, I do a cold dye. And you just sometimes get colours you don't expect. Because if it's, if it's already a weird colour, then it's going to turn into an unexpected colour. But like I once got turquoise, but it was on something that was a sort of very light beige. So it went this beautiful tealy weird colour. Has to be cold for wool. Has to be cold for wool. Okay, I'm gonna take you now and show you my scarf collection. All right, and then we'll show you how to wear them. Here's a collection, Lucy. That is 
very satisfying to look at. Now this wasn't like this darling, it took me a while to do and I did curl a lot of scarves at the weekend but this bookcase is like my narrow one I have for my handbags I showed you a few weeks ago. I get them yeah. from Habitat but you know we can collect a lot of scarves, we can store them so we never see them, so we never wear them. But I've done them into categories and you'll notice by the colours, these are all colours I wear a lot Lucy. So. I love yellow. I love turquoises and blues and greens. I love that sort of mixed browns, but with something added and a few plummies. This is off-white. This is a cream one I'm going to dye. It's my mother's and I don't suit cream. Do you remember we tried it last week? Yes. Yeah, so I'm gonna maybe dye that. That's my blues, of which I wear the most of. That's my sort of pinks and reds. That's my kind of neutrals. That's my greys and that's actually jumpers and that's jumpers. Then I have hanging scarves here, and these are faux fur scarves. You know, my Saint Laurent thing, which everyone knows about. Little tiny things that look like ties, but they're actually scarves for me, and lovely faux fur bits. Putting them in colour, even if you just have like, your scarves is that, will really help you see them and see the pattern and be inspired to wear them. So let's start off with some basic rules. Let's start off with how I tie scarves. One of my favourite shaped scarves is a square. It's kind of an, what I call an oblong square. So I take it end to end. So I've got that kind of like you're making a kerchief in the middle like that. Switch it round. So the longer bit is at the front. There'll always be a longer bit. Then I take the two ends and I bring them round. I pull it across, bring it back, pull my hair out and voila. And I've got that lovely sort of scarf cascade. But that's my scarf tying and I'll do it with each of them, Lucy, to show you. It's probably the most requested thing. And it is important because I can show the ways people might have done it, which would to be, you know, to do it round your neck and have two bits side by side. But I love the volume of colour in the front of the face. OK, it's like two um, sort of waterfalls for your breasts. Whether you have breasts or not, it's like, hello, scarf <laughs> has arrived. Hello. And that's what we want to avoid. So if you know that it's going to really help you when you're thinking about how to do it that scarf is um silk is it this is a mixture of silk and wool and it's one of my trusty old lvmh scarves i see them on vestia collective now rule number one can you wear the same print with a print of a scarf especially if it's a leopard print what a conundrum you know how i feel about this one but I love double leopard because what it also does is it makes some coats that might feel a bit that they were quite inexpensive, more expensive. So when I wear this coat, which wasn't cheap, but this was a warehouse coat, it's not perfectly cut, this coat, but just having that continuation of the fabric of the print gives it a luxury, Lucy, in my eyes. Yeah, I really like it. And I think if you were trying to find a scarf to go with it that wasn't that print, yeah, I mean, it would jar. It would jar. And if I look at it without, you know, it just does something fantastic for the coat. Don't be scared of leopard with leopard. That's that one. Let's just keep the tones the same. Keep the tones the same, exactly. Step away from the leopard. Oh, there's more. So this one, there's something interesting about the width of round necked faux fur coats. So if a coat is a round necked coat, you can sometimes feel bricky. So I quite like a scarf to stop that brick feeling of a coat. So I'm thinking, okay, zoom, 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 what would I do with it? This is like really, this is called clash, print clash. But what I did with this the other day is I took the, the sort of goldier tones of that, which are the color of the, the little bit of the print, right? Yeah, to the spot. So this scarf, I don't fold in half first. I just go like that. So I think I chose this because I'm wearing blue jeans. Yeah. And I wanted that sort of flow of the blue and it just breaks up that breadth that's made by a round neck. I'm trying this next week, 100%. Great, all right. This is the too smaller jacket. Like I can bend my arms. There's no way though I can do it up. And I wanna wear it, but if it's cold, Lucy, you know, you want that scarf that nestles in the middle and allows you to just continue the warmth that a coat would normally do. Same shape again, this scarf I got in India. A lot of my scarves, Lucy, I have to say, I got in on my travels. I love whenever I go to anywhere on holiday, I always buy a scarf. So I have the one I got from Japan last year, the one I got from India. You know, I, I kind of, they remind me of journeys. Yeah, that's so nice. So they're very 
sentimental to me. So this one again is just a whoosh round, pull it back, and it's just become the warmth. And with this, you need really warm scarves. You know, you've got to do it with something sort of cashmere wool mix. It doesn't look too small. It's giving a good shape. You know, sometimes there is tremendous value in a coat that's too small if the arms still fit because it will give you the waist that you maybe have lost. Really nice, it just adds another layer. Yeah. Another little trick whilst we're here is if you wear things like jumpsuits, for example, or things yeah. where the crutch is low, Yeah. all right, I always use a scarf to go in front and stop you seeing how low your crutch might be. So I might wear it longer like that. So you don't quite know how low I go. Okay, next one. <laughs> okay, darling, this is just a treasure and you know it's treasure and I had thought I'd lost it before we did the scarf show, the scarf show, but I found it again. It's the old YSL and I've given this as a gift and it literally is a piece of gossamer, but this has saved me so many times and it's the concept of a metallic scarf. There are moments where you might suddenly feel you wish you were smarter, but you can't suddenly put on a pair of diamond earrings, you know, and there's something about where you need to show the smartness. So this, I have worn for that moment when I've needed to smarten something up and I've walked out, oh, it's a bit smarter. So I put this on. This is the one one that I will do in the way that I said not to do on the thicker scarves because it's so little. So when I travel, Lucy, this is my, what I call my anti-jet lag scarf. And I could put on de-stress, which yes. is going to be divine for this. But this is also the kind of fabric that is going to make my skin look better. And this is again, going back to that thing of making sure that scarves are in your most flattering shades. And if you happen to have something you love, but it slightly takes the life out of you, how a metallic scarf, because it will go with any color, Lucy, will put the life back into something. So if you've got a beautiful shaped jumper or a top that you adore, but the color's a little bit off, this could bring it all back together. So would you say if you were a, a silver jewellery wearer versus a gold jewellery we jewelry wearer, you would try to find one? Yes, I would. I would find it sort of, I mean, you could do soft goldy tone. It's about finding this fabric. I mean, I want to show you this fabric so we can all find it and try and do it. It's gossamer. You know, it's so simple, this pattern. One day I'm going to make this and sell it on Trinity London for sure. Sorry, telling you now, Saint Laurent, because I know how many people would buy it. But in the meantime, just search it out or make one yourself. And it's, it's the best thing. And I shove it in my bag sometimes when I just don't know how smart I should be. And it, yeah. it saves me. It's the saver scarf. So I finally got out the Estes Anna suit she made me that copied the Camilla and Mark one. Yes, and I was so happy to see you in it because I know you weren't sure when you first had it made. I wasn't sure about it, but as soon as I put the neon under it, this is a sidebar now, Lucy, it brought it to life. Because do you remember I tried it when we very first tried it with different colours? Yes. And I love it with the neon. It's quite a big suit, so finding a coat that goes over it is quite tricky. And it's double-breasted, so it does do up. So I found and invested in my scarf coat a few weekends ago. Welcome to my scarf coat. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. It's yeah. Dries Van Noten. You know who I think of when I think of this? And who I adore? Oh, Iris Apfel. Iris Apfel. I mean, Iris Apfel, who is the most iconic woman of style. She always wears wool around her face and it's glamorous and soft and cozy all at the same time. Yeah, she's an icon. And she says, more is more, put more on. More is more. Chanel has always takes something off. Iris has put something else on. I'm with Iris the whole way. What's it made of? It's made of wool. It does, you know, it leaves friends occasionally on the floor, but there's so many friends to go that it's all right. It looks so warm. It's so hot, darling. I think I'll take it off now. Trini, just before you do, what lip are you wearing? I put on Dahlia because with these colours and with that neon and wintry, Dahlia lip love is divine. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about colour blocking, which I think we could do as a whole film, Lucy. So I've got sort of burgundy plum shoes with a kind of crop trouser, bright pink Serena Butte shirt. And then I'm going to do my pink coat from River Island. But what might bring it all together is this. Oh, it had to be my best purchase ever. It's the outfit completer. So whenever I'm wearing burgundy, I put the burgundy bit up here. Right. And if I'm wearing red trousers, I do, I do that. There's this kind of blocking, which really to me is the true element of, of when you perceive what color blocking is. It's having colors that go together left to right and um, top to bottom. 
That's so clever. I love that you do that. And this is, if anyone can find it, this was Warehouse. It was about 30 quid. And it's probably, you know, my top three scars that if I lost it, I would be as upset as if I lost that Dree's few hundred pounds one. Yeah, it's the width of it that's so nice. So width, it's like incredibly furry and gorgeous. And it just works so well. If you're still in business warehouse, please remake it. As my final party trick, we'll do some double scarf. All right, we'll finish up with the concept of double scarfing, which is something I love to do. And if you look at, if you lay all your scarves out in how they suit each other and you don't worry about mixing pattern with plain, you'll begin to get an indication of what double scarfing is about. This is a very nice top and bottom. This is Victoria Beckham, I think Zara skirt. And I'm gonna take my favorite Smythe coat. If I was doing this, I could do a singular scarf moment and I could go for a scarf that has tone. That's nice. You know, that's what I would suggest makes any outfit look lovely and it's a beautiful line to the coat. Yeah. But occasionally, I just want to add a bit more. Iris Apple again. There's something I adore about this scarf. It's another one I got from India, but you know, stripy stuff you can get from Bowdoin to God knows where. And I just love having that double scarf. So it might be that I tuck in the first one and I just have that one just hanging down. And then another thing I do sometimes do, Lucy, we'll just finish it off in the classic way. And if you can guess what I'm going to do, clever girl. <laughs> that Gucci belt's coming out the drawer. <laughs> <laughs> you are fucking hilarious. I love that. That's something to play with for sure. Something to play with and have inspiration. And I think, you know, this weekend, ladies, get on all your scarves and really look at the ones that are colours that really suit you. And as you noticed at the beginning, I only keep the ones with great colours, ones that don't suit you, but are beautiful pieces. See if you can dye them. If you can't, maybe, you know, hand them over to somebody else who, who really suits that colour. And then look at how you can store them, Lucy, so that they are easy to see and maybe hang them with coats that you wear them with, et cetera, et cetera. Now, next week, I've got a list. I've got a list. Oh, you've got a list. I've got a list, but it's on my bloody phone, but it's also on my computer. Hold on. Okay, Lucy, I'll give you three. You give me three. Right. Power dressing. Yeah. Green. Yeah. Winter white. Okay, I've got dressing for a date. Oh, lucky you. Purple. Purple. <laughs> yeah and jumpsuits okay i've also got showing you my entire shimmer sequin collection but that might be a two-hour closet confessions velvet and mask outfits ladies it's up to you make your suggestions below and i'm going to take these clothes off because i'm sweltering have a wonderful weekend everyone and we'll catch up soon bye lucy bye